Hi, I'm Mar Webster with In Creative Company, and thank you for joining us for one of our talks today. Today, we're joined by the fantastic Thaisa Farmiga to talk all about HBO's mm -hmm. The Gilded Age. Um, and I was interested when you were reading the scripts, how much you were not just looking at the script and the details of your character, but how much you were looking to the details of her parents, played wonderfully by Carrie Coon and Morgan Spector. Mm -hmm. um, because it feels like with this character, there's so many aspects of the way that she's been raised, the way that her parents mm -hmm. have really been working to break down barriers that would be such an undeniable influence on her so how much did the parental details in the scripts also help and shape your character development process oh absolutely you know um they very much played into it I, th I think the thing is you know with Gladys it's she she grew up much more privileged than her parents did Bertha the reason she, the reason um finding a path into into society is so life and death for her is because she grew up working class she grew up with not having money same thing with her father George so they built everything they have from nothing so there's an appreciation for it and there's also more of um, a fire in Bertha to to attain what she wants you know what I mean whereas Gladys is you know a bit, when, we, when we meet her at first she's a bit naive and she's definitely a bit sheltered and I think Bertha is is working hard to um, you know prevent Gladys from from seeing those hardships in life and I think for me preparing Gladys um yeah just reading the interactions not only between um my scenes with 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 my parents but how they interact with each other and, and watching also um I mean it was amazing watching that one scene where where Bertha gets so frustrated and she's alone and you see that total moment of of just um release and she flings her tray across the room it's just reading those moments too, sort of getting, um, I don't know, seeing more in depth to, to, to the other characters. It always is going to affect how you play it. Um, I think mostly I was lucky that uh, all the prep work I did, just being able to be in a scene with Carrie Coon and Morgan Spector and their chemistry and, and, and how they interact made my Gladys so much better. It also comes across like there's so much to be able to play to and so many layers to find with Gladys as a character mm -hmm. because she is at that pivotal point. Like you said, she's a little little shy and a little naive in certain ways, mm -hmm. but at the same time, she's kind of trying to figure out who she wants to be in the world and mm -hmm. what she wants from life and, and what she wants that are in line with her parents, but also what she wants that's completely her own and separate to mm -hmm. that as well. Um, and so how did you set about figuring out that roadmap of discovery that she's going on through the first season? Because it, it develops in this kind of very like delicate in nuanced way episode mm -hmm. by episode um i think uh a lot of it comes from um really fabulous character writing um on on, on, on julian and, and, and the writer's part um i think also uh you know like any teenager on the brink of adulthood you crave independence you crave your own identity you crave wanting to experience the world um in like through your own way in your own eyes and have your own opinions and and being um yeah, being sheltered and being forced to be contained and, and, and trapped in Bertha's house and not let out in the world, you know, it's fine for a bit. It's it's like a, it's like a slow simmer to a boil. You know what I mean? As when you're a kid, it's sort of like, oh, this is just the way things are, and you accept it. And as you start getting older and you get to see um, the people around you having different experiences, I think also, um, well, having people seeing the people around you have different experiences, you really start to realize, wait maybe this isn't okay. Maybe I'm not happy just being mom, you know, mommy's little doll and, and, and playing dress up. I have opinions and, and I want to figure out what they are. So I think when Gladys also sees and meets Marion for the first time, Marion Brooke is, is, um, is a free thinking uh, woman. She's adamant about taking charge of her own life. And I think there's something about that that's really um, inspiring and, and attractive for Gladys. So I think she takes a little bit of motivation from that as well to be like, wait a minute, this she's another young woman is choosing a different, a different path forward. Maybe I can do the same thing. It also feels like Gladys probably hasn't had much opportunity to be around a lot of people her own age because of the mm -hmm. way that her parents are kind of trying to keep her, you know, they haven't bought her out in society yet. She hasn't, mm -hmm. she's not even supposed to be there when they're hosting a party in their own home. She's supposed to go upstairs, mm -hmm. um, you know, and so like you said, when she meets Marion, there's kind of like this real kinetic energy of like someone that's, you know, even just close to my age that I can look mm -hmm. up to. Um, and how did you feel like being shielded from being around her peers influenced her? And in particularly kind of going back to that closeness that she she has within her family as well because that's kind of her entire ecosystem with mm -hmm. them and with the staff in the house absolutely i think you know gladys relies a lot on her brother larry even though obviously the expectations of a young woman in that time period is a lot different than a young man and he's off in the world and doing his things and he went off to college and you know he's trying to um, um you know prepare to to take over george's business and and and, and find his own wife and all that um while he's busy, I still feel like they have a really um, sincere relationship and they bond over the fact that they 
are starting to realize they have different expectations of, of what their parents want for them versus what they want for themselves. And I think Larry is a, is a huge um, support system for, for Gladys. I think also, um, you know, it's hard because we're, so we're meeting, we're meeting the Russells when they're first moving to their house um, on, was it Fifth Avenue? And previously they'd been living down on 30th street or something like that. And they don't see their old friends anymore. So if Gladys had any sort of, uh, she had any comrades or anybody her own age, it, it, it doesn't translate to this new life. You know, Bertha is very adamant about what she wants and she wants a place in society because again, as a woman without a husband, you have no, you have no freedom, but even Bertha in the sense of sure, her, her husband's made all this money and, and she's a married woman with children. But if she doesn't have a place in society, she doesn't really have a place in, in the world as a woman. What do you do if you don't have responsibilities outside of the house? Um, and yeah, I mean, I think for Gladys, it's just, she's a little bit more accepted by the younger generation of, of old society, which I think makes it a bit easier for her transition to want to be a part of it. Yeah. And one of the other aspects I wanted to talk about in terms of how you shaped your performance is working with Her Howard Samuelson, who was the dialect mm -hmm. coach that you were working with. Because, um, you know, it's not like you can just go online and look up videos from that time period. So I was really yeah. interested in how he worked with you to shape a lot of the very specific affectations and, mm -hmm. and what the delivery needed to be. I love Samuel Howard, uh, Howard Samuelson, Samuel Howardson. God damn it. No, I love Howard Samuelson. I, we first started working. Um, we started first started working together in like December, 2019. I had my first zoom with him and I was, I was so nervous. Cause you know, it's like, it, it's almost feels like it was scarier than doing like a full proper accent because it was, it was different, a little bit more posh, but it wasn't, you know, you, you didn't want to go too far because also nowadays with audiences and stuff, you know, there has to be a little bit of leniency and like, you don't, you know, the accuracy of, of sticking how close to actually how they spoke at the time. There's, there's a bit more, um, a bit more forgiveness. And, you know, you also want to be appealing to audiences nowadays. So Howard had a really, um, I feel like he had a difficult job of, 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 of finding that line and being like, how do we make them sound of the time period, but not alienate them from newer visit or like newer viewers. And um, yeah, I mean, it was just repeating Howard for hours on end and sort of, you know, figuring out, learning all about like the diphthongs and like how, how the vowel sounds, how it carries from this to that. And I remember the first, I don't know, the first few Zooms we had, I was just terrified and felt like I was never going to get it. And then all of a sudden something just clicks and, and yeah, the, the character is sort of like created, you know what I mean? Like obviously Gladys is there. She's the words on the page. She's the outfits I tried on. She's the hair makeup I tried on and, and she's whatever I gave in my audition, but incorporating all that with the dialogue, it, it really, I don't know, it, it, it transformed me into Gladys. It was, it was a perfect combination. What what was the moment from the show that you auditioned with and and what was kind of the way that you approached it? Because obviously you didn't have the time to kind of go in mm -hmm. and do the full handed research to do all the dialect training. And so how did sure. you approach the audition for, for a character like this where you're coming into a period piece with so many specific elements still? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I originally uh, I originally auditioned for Marion, um, Louisa's character. And, and I remember I had a hard time. I tried to tape that two times, I think, maybe even I think I tried once and worked twice. I tried like two times and it was something wasn't fitting, but I did, I did send it out to casting. I was like, okay, I got what I got. Um, but I just felt like I didn't fully click with the character and I wasn't getting it. And, and, and clearly it was because it wasn't the right one for me. Cause they came back and like, Oh, how do you feel about auditioning for Gladys? Um, and I was like, okay, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm feeling super excited and I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So I wasn't able to, I didn't feel like I really nailed that other audition. So another chance to go back and be like, let me try again. Um, and it immediately clicked. And it was like, oh, I understand this mindset. Gladys is, is a version of me when I was 16 and, and, and you know, growing up in a house and, and rules of parents. And sometimes they seem arbitrary and are trying to sort out how can I, you know, um, I don't know, how can you uh, move forward finding your own identity when you still have your parents' identity kind of hanging on you. So I love that about her. And, and so for the sake of preparing for the audition, no, I couldn't really work on the dialect, but it was just sort of like, it was like a posture thing for me. It's like, as soon as you put your shoulders back and it's just sort of, I don't know, speaking, it's just, I can't even remember because I was worried about it. And I think that's why I might've related to Gladys more because I kind of associate sometimes that period thing with, it's either, I didn't know how to be like, uh, I didn't know how to be a woman. I knew how to be a young woman or, uh, or I can picture period dramas with, you know, much older female characters. I wasn't sure. I think that's why I didn't respond to Miriam. But for Gladys, it was just sort of, which is a bit more sweet, you know what I mean? Of falling into the proper posture and, and, and the sweetness and and um, the desire to just want independence. I think my audition scene was, um, 
it was a scene with, it's a scene with Miss Grant. I don't know what episode it was. It's a scene with Miss Grant when she wants to go, when she's going to meet a boy, which we're not supposed to talk about. <laughs> Yeah, we're bringing up the the idea of posture within this character as well. And that's obviously a huge thing that you need to ensure that you're carrying through every single scene. Um, and was this something where the moment that you were on set and you were even just trying on the initial potential costumes mm -hmm. for this character, that you really found the posture a lot in that way is because, you know, the physicality of what you're wearing has such a restrictiveness as well that kind of, I imagine, naturally kind of makes you stand in certain ways oh, as well. Oh, absolutely. You're 100% you're right. Um, I think also like on my script, the first thing I wrote was just like on the main page with posture, all caps, underlined four times. I'm like, you got to stand up straight. Also, I mean, I, I did this movie, The Nun, where I had to, I played a nun and, and the same thing. It was just like, oh, I think I really did a good job back then with the costume. You know, it's just like when I'm in the wardrobe fitting, making sure um, I go into it trying to stand as straight as possible because all the costumes are hand um, handmade on, on, on Gilded Age, and I, of course, obviously, but everything's tailored exactly to me. So if I'm sitting with a slouch, posture when it starts that's kind of where we get do you know do you know what I mean like so going into it and having it um yeah but also I'm giving myself a lot of credit it's also the corset <laughs> it was also wardrobe department just putting me in my clothes and, and sort of zipping me up and it's like oh we're not slouching today are we <laughs> I, I love with Gladys's costumes as well that they're always a little bit more embellished than maybe mm -hmm. Marion's or some of the other characters that are in similar mm -hmm. age. You know, there's yes. a little bit more color to them or maybe mm -hmm. if it's like a white outfit, there's there's kind of ribbon around the top or if mm -hmm. there's flowers on a hat, you know, maybe there's 10 flowers instead of just one or two. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And did that kind of help in tapping in as well? Because it's, it's kind of reflective of that idea of like her parents, you know, breaking the barriers and not necessarily conforming to tradition in all the traditional ways. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think, you know, one thing that Bertha could flaunt or, or could she could brag about is their wealth. You know what I mean? So being able to dress up her daughter and, and you know, take her and she, um, Gladys is almost like a mannequin. She's a doll that Bertha gets to dress and manipulate and, and, and move the arms and, and situate her as she wants to be. And I, I think it's a way to discreetly brag and sort of flaunt and be like, this is us, notice us. You know what I mean? Um, I think she also just wanted the best for her daughter but also because she could provide the best so why not give it you know in, in the terms of fabrics and money and, and putting into a beautiful outfit and obviously one of the other aspects that comes into play in so many scenes is the very specific formalities of that time period there's a lot of rules that aren't necessarily spoken out loud but it's like you know when gladys walks into a room where she's standing who is she addressing how is she addressing them what's her body language and interaction mm -hmm. with people um and so was that something where julian and the rest of the writers were able to kind of key you into some of those details or was that a lot about individual research to really understand a lot of the unspoken formalities sure um it was actually um uh i mean there was what it was in the writing but the production and, and i know julian was really pushing for it they um HBO had put together these, um, they put together this like research Bible of, of all the, um, all the like etiquette rules and, and just um, a history of the time period and, and, and just knowing everything from, you know, um, I, gosh, how to hold a spoon to how you look at someone to how people made their money and what were the first railroads made of. Um, but what was really fascinating is that they kind of had um, a series of lectures by these historians and uh, professors, uh, Erica Dunbar and Helen Vate where they sat and they talked to us about, um, you know, we kind of, it was literally like, it was like a whole college class, all the, the whole ensemble cast was there. And we had our notebooks and we were taking our, taking our notes and learning how to approach one another, how to hold your spoon, how to dine, um, learning that you can't make any sort of positive remark. It's, it's, it's almost, a, it's rude to talk about how good the food is, which seems kind of counter to obviously how we live our life now. If, if someone made you a beautiful meal, all you want to do is gush and say, wow, how good. But it was one of the interesting aspects back then was they really thought that eating was their their most animalistic instinct. And it was sort of the, fur the thing they wanted to be the furthest from. So learning those little, yeah, it was just all integral to, to everybody playing their characters. Um, and I think it was independent research, but I really think being able to um, have that research Bible and, and putting us in those lectures, um, we really learned a lot and it helped shape everybody's characters. Yeah. And when it comes to the writing, there's there's always kind of like a very specific 
style of pacing to the way that stories are arced and the way that characters go on journeys in period pieces. You know, it's mm -hmm. not about suddenly they become a different person and suddenly something very mm -hmm. dramatic happens. It's about that kind of build where almost you don't even notice something's happening and then you it's suddenly realize slow burn, that yeah. this real transition. Um, and for you in, in playing Gladys, kind of what's that like in terms of finding your performance and, and finding mm -hmm. those gradual nuanced beats and details so that you can create such a transition to her by the end of the season? Uh, again, I think I have to give a lot of it to the to the writing. I think the those character moments that um, just all the character things, anything about you know her her transition and her arc was was in the script, and a lot of it is just bringing that to life. I think there were a few moments where um, you know I really had to think about it, like when um, I don't know if it's episode four or five or when 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 Gladys is sort of rejected by a, a male suitor, and um, it's not really it doesn't really have anything to do with her, um, but having to think and, and realize, okay, how would she actually approach this? It's more, you know, like I remember I wanted to be a little bit angry or wanting to be um, snippy with my mother and, and realizing, wait a minute, she would be dejected. She has no control. She has no power. And, and, and in this time period, you know, it's, it's, it's not like nowadays where someone tells me I can't do something. I can be like, no, I'm a woman. I can do, you know what I mean? Like, you don't, it's, it's a different thing back then. It was almost, um, you know, people looked at it as a negative trait when obviously it's not, but she couldn't do anything about it. And um, so there's different little moments where you have to realize, wait, my reaction now would be different to how it would have been then. But otherwise, I, I really feel like the character was on the page. And, and you know, there are definitely scenes in the beginning where I was like, oh, I want um, I want Gladys to, I want more, you know what I mean? I want her to stand up for herself, but it wasn't yet. And, and Michael Engler was good at times to remind me like, oh, she's still, she's still, she's still shy. She's still sheltered. She's still naive. She hasn't had that growth moment yet. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's all hands on deck. You know, you, you get it from the writing, you get it from your natural instincts and the director and just being, you know, it's all, it all comes together perfectly to help shape it. So you were mentioning Michael Engler, who's obviously one of the, the show directors and in working with the directors on the series, what, what were kind of some of the key moments like that particular scene that really stand out for you in terms of really collaborating and really finding a particular moment together? Um, you know, what I, I loved, what I loved about working with Michael is how in tune to this world he is. He, I don't know if he lives and breathes it, but he knows everything about it. Any question you could possibly have of how they would interact, how do they approach, how do you, how do I hold my hands in the scene? Where am I, you know, where am I coming from emotionally, but also the physical aspects of, of, of that time. Michael had an answer for everything, which was, which was really amazing to kind of have that encyclopedia in the person that's giving you direction, emotional direction as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I, the moment, like one of the moments that stands out the most is is just filming the bizarre scene and, and Gladys comes in and I had her being a little bit more cool and collected and looking around and I'm like, and he reminds me, she's still young. Like she does, she doesn't get out of the house. This is, it's it's more of like wonder and, and awe and looking around you and seeing things as opposed to, I don't know, being, you know, confident 27 year old Thais. I think sometimes that's the thing I had to remember was like, right, she's 17. She's just, she's just on the brink of adulthood. It's just reminding yourself of what it feels like to to want independence and not have it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like this is me kind of talking about wonder and awe as an audience member when mm -hmm. we first get to even go inside of, of that home. And, and it's something that her parents have had completely built and decorated mm -hmm. to how they want it. Um, and so when you got onto set and started filming on that location, how did that give you certain details about their mm -hmm. family, about their life? Because this is a home that's wholly representative of this family because they've chosen every detail. Sure. Um, I mean, listen, you, you read the words on the page and your imagination can run wild, but there's nothing like walking in that first time, walking into the Russell house. Um, and it's funny because it's a set piece. I mean, the whole downstairs and I mean, the whole downstairs, I mean, the whole it's 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 built. It's a mansion built in a soundstage. So you walk into the soundstage, you see other crew members, everyone's in there, like their work boots and their jeans and, you know, they got their tools. And then you step through these doors and you're literally transported back in time into this giant, beautiful, lavish mansion. I don't know what else to call it. Um, and I think that I didn't know, I didn't know it was going to be that beautiful. Again, like you read the words and you imagine, you know, it's rich, you know, they have money and they're wealthy and he's made millions and especially millions back then, you know, relating it to what that amount would be now. It's a lot of money. But it wasn't until my first scene and just fully dressed as Gladys and like the decadence of her costume and going and doing a dinner scene where like 
you don't understand the, 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 the prop department, how they, um, they made these beautiful, beautiful, everything, every piece of food was so beautiful from the butter to like the placement of the leaf to the, to the pastries, to everything. Cause again, the Russell family is rich and you have to see that. Um, so I remember my first scene was a dinner scene and walking in and, and just seeing the wealth. I was astonished. Like I knew they were rich. I didn't know they were this rich. <laughs> And obviously some, some of the elements in their house that carries with it as well is, is all of the staff and we get to meet some mm -hmm. of them as characters. Um, you know, and with Gladys in particular, because she's of a younger generation, there's kind of a little bit more looseness to a degree and her relationship mm -hmm. dynamic is a bit, a bit less formal than her parents at times. You know, when mm -hmm. she wants to sneak out of the house, she's enlisting someone who's in the help to actually help sure, her get out. Sure. Um, and so was it, was it very straightforward when you were looking at the scripts and looking at the page to really find what that relationship dynamic was gonna be with the staff in the house for her? Um, I think some of it was found on the day. Uh, I, you know, I could, obviously through the scripts, you could tell like, oh, there's a, there's a separation between, you know, the upstairs people and the downstairs people. Um, obviously, you know, Bertha would form a relationship with the ladies made because she's always there and, 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 and George with the butler. But, um, you know, I think I was actually remembering that specific moment when I'm running with, I don't know if it's Adelheid or whoever the maid is and, and we're sneaking out, she's helping me sneak out. Um, and not fully knowing until we got to set and Michael's there giving, you know, giving direction and, and not knowing exactly how buddy buddy you can be or how like giddy and excited I can be. And also trying to remember, wait, but she's also the help is it's a funny, it's a funny juggling act. I think, I think it was just like tiny little notes and guidance from Michael being no, 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 don't smile there. No, don't give her that. Or, Oh no, you guys are in it together. It was always, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just guided by the moment, you know, we had Michael watching and I'm thankful for him because he made it, he made it work and, and, and feel natural to, you know, establish the relationship boundaries, but also know that she's a young girl and she's looking for a friend in a way too. And because you get to do so many scenes with with Carrie and with Morgan within that family dynamic, what was kind of the the collaborative style that you all found in terms of how you wanted to, dis you know, whether you wanted to discuss scenes before you went into filming them, whether you mm -hmm. wanted to kind of save that for on camera and kind of like the rhythm that, that the three of you found mm -hmm. together? It's hard too, because we were filming during COVID. And when we started the Russell scenes, it was October 2020. So like deep in COVID, all the new regulations, learning how to, you know, getting all the testing and the protocols and distance and wearing masks and rehearsing with masks. So it was kind of, you know, the first bit of it was kind of difficult finding our, our footing. We sort of were all kept separate until we were on set and then we had to rehearse with masks and then we didn't really get to see each other's faces or look into each other, you know, until we were filming. So I feel like we got lucky that Carrie Coon and Morgan Spector were our, we got to play Bertha or we're playing Bertha and Russell and I got to play their, their daughter. They're just so, they're so fabulous as actors and, and as people. And um, they have a beautiful chemistry together, just the two, you know, the two of them interacting. So I feel like a lot of the family dynamic came from just having really fab, like a really fabulous cast. Like I could, you know what I mean? I, I don't think I could have contributed anything more if Carrie wasn't so fabulous as she is. And because obviously in playing a character on a, on a, on any show, but also a show like this, it's such a, a beautiful opportunity to have that journey of discovery yourself as well, where the further you're getting into the season, the more scenes you're mm -hmm. playing, there's kind of more things that you find and get the opportunity to explore. And so what's the difference in terms of the relationship you end up being able to have with a character like Gladys when you get mm -hmm. to spend that length of time and when you continue getting new scripts and new details mm -hmm. and, and kind of almost have to kind of concoct new elements based on what mm -hmm. you've already created as the foundation um i mean i feel like it, it's that same sort of like gleeful giddiness you do you get as an audience member when you're watching a show and, you, and your character um your favorite character come on, comes on you get to like oh this is what they're doing next you know it's the same thing i was like i was i was chomping at the bit i was like give me more i want to see what she does next and we got and, and the thing with the old age we got a lot of the scripts um pretty far in advance, which I know in previous shows like American Horror Story and stuff, it was all very last minute. So you just kind of find out the day before what you're doing this. It was nice to kind of know the trajectory because we filmed a lot of, um, I think we block, sh we block shot the the first like five episodes and then the second five episodes. There was, we were, I was filming scenes from episode five when I was filming scenes from episode one. Um, so it was nice to have a clear sense of Gladys's arc prior to, you know, filming it all. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that's the thing that I was very, I was most excited about is it's been a while since I, I've done a, a full season of a TV show. And, and as you're saying, it's like that relationship you build with your character and you go on that same journey with her. And like, while I'm growing as Thais over those seven months, Gladys is growing and, and 
I don't know, but there's nothing like it. I don't, it's, it's an amazing experience to be able to see someone grow and, and be proud of someone who in a weird way is you. Like I, you know, when Gladys has some of her, her growth moments and her aha, and at the end when she stands up for herself, I'm like, yeah, you, you know, like you're so supportive. But I'm also like, wait, this is me. It's so it's weird and meta. <laughs> and from working on the first season of this show, what did you find were the aspects that, that challenged you the most or were the things that you learned the most along the way from the process? Um, I think one of the biggest challenges is, is, is what we talked about earlier was, was the dialect working with Howard. And um, yeah, I was nervous about it. And, and it's, again, it's just incorporating a whole bunch of different layers you know I was nervous how am I going to act in the in the course of all day how am I going to you know it, it's little things that um little things that add up that just like contribute to the nerves and how is this going to go um I think I was excited I've, I really love learning um and I love putting myself in a scenario that's something different than I've ever than I've ever been in before in Gilded Age is definitely a time period that I've never experienced and had anything to do with um so it's it's hard because it's like it's kind of cheesy, but all the the challenges were were positives. I like pushing myself and being scared and being like, okay, damn, I got to spend fourteen hours in the course. So let's go. How do you make it work? And it's also reminding yourself like people live this life, and and it gives you appreciation for the women of that time. Yeah. Well, I can't wait to see the rest of where her journey goes and where that art awesome. goes for the rest of the season. Thank you so much, Thaisa. Oh, well, my pleasure. Appreciate it.